Good evening. I'm back out again for part two of the UCO candle lantern. Can it warm a tent? So tonight I'm using the Exped Mars 2. It's a, a large two-man tent and I've chosen this because I can completely zip the door shut at each end and there's, uh, there's when I've completely closed it the mesh is all closed and I can completely close the outer tent as well so that's what I'm going to do uh, and I've decided to get a little bit more technical so as well as doing what I did in part one and incidentally in part one here you can see some of the influencing factors to heat loss in the tent that I discussed so have a look at that so I'm, I'm gonna get a little bit more technical I've, uh, I've even got it I've even got a clipboard here beware the man with a clipboard and what I've decided to do is have a good look at the camper's worst enemy that's condensation so this clever little device the uh, Kestrel 3000 that's currently Going. Can't see because of the glare. One degree. Uh, I'm going to measure the temperature outside, the temperature in the tent empty, and then I'm going to light the UCO candle inside. I'm going to place it in the middle of the tent this time, and like a dome hybrid tunnel tent leave it for 20 minutes and re-measure the temperature and then I'm going to get inside and relax for a while and see how much my body temperature adds to it but crucially this time I'm also going to measure the dew point now the dew point is the temperature in degrees centigrade at which the air becomes super saturated in other words water vapor will start to form and therefore on any surfaces that are slightly colder condensation will form so the closer to the air temperature you are to the dew point the more likely condensation will form so in theory when I'm in there the candle as well as raising the temperature will cause the dew point to be further away so that means that the relative humidity is reducing uh, as well as the, the temperature rising and the dew point will go farther away now if the if in the empty tent the let's say for instance the dew point is within three degrees of the uh, actual temperature then and that doesn't change then we've not achieved anything in terms of beating condensation by using the candle so uh, also I'd expect in the empty tent with the candle there's the dew point temperature and the actual temperature to be further apart but what will be really interesting is when I get in there and start panting away maybe with a little bit of whiskey again we'll see if that point starts to get separated even more so join me uh, later on so if you want to have a look at part one to see what happened with the, the one men tent with this experiment it was it was fairly interesting and and it's got a, a good amount of, of, of interest so join me uh, throughout the stages of using this and then there's going to be a stage two I'm not going to sleep in the tent tonight but uh, tomorrow night it's forecast to be cold and maybe wet and snowy and I'm going to slip in there with my young son and we'll do all the experiments again and we'll see what it's like with, with two people there kind of in for a prolonged period again in those three conditions tent empty, candle, candle with people cheers Right, so I've had the 
kestrel gauge in the tent for a little while. The outside temperature is minus 0.2 degrees centigrade and the dew point is minus 0.5 degrees centigrade and that makes sense because they're very close and there's frost forming on the ground which will be a little bit colder uh, than the air temperature so the humidity is less in the tent outside it's 92.8 and inside the tent it's 78.2 percent of uh, relative humidity so saturation and the temperature inside the tent is minus 0.3 degrees centigrade and the dew point is minus 0 0.9 degrees centigrade so they're so they're quite close so if it cools any more in the tent uh, frost will start to form and on the fly sheet just there there is a little bit of uh, frost forming so that area will be cooler and you can see it progressing from there over to there as that part cools down in that slight breeze so yeah the temp the uh, experiment is hotting up nicely so i'm going to light the candle now and shut the tent doors and leave it for a good 20 minutes and we would hope that the temperature should, should raise a wee bit let's give it a go Okay, I've left the candle in there a good half an hour. We'll go in and we'll have to be fairly quick because this thermometer is very sensitive and as the air starts to cool it'll change very quickly. So let's just and we'll get the temperature. So it's the dew point minus 3.9, so that's changed. temperature is one degree great so the temperature has elevated in half an hour by uh, 1.3 degrees centigrade and this is a bigger tent than I did last uh, I did last night which was a one-man tent so that kind of makes sense and I've got it a little bit more precise this time it's kind of on the same level but uh, just a note about this I left this candle in here and that's not the recommended thing to do you should never have a naked flame in a tent near any flammable materials and you definitely should not leave it unattended so don't do what I've done but I'm doing this for experimental purposes it's not as an example to leave the candle in the in the tent burning so I'm gonna settle down here for a little while the uh, the dram of the night this time is some rusty nail and for those that don't know it's uh, half whiskey and half drambuie. Fantastic. This little flask I've had for years it's got uh, a little schooner inside and behind this portal and whenever I crack this open with friends what I always say is no matter how full it is we've got to get the schooner floating so it's partly submerged at the moment there so uh, we've got to get the, the whiskey level underneath the hull. So uh, I'm going to enjoy this for a few minutes and I'm going to get my sleeping bag ready and uh, just enjoy being in here for a few minutes and we'll see if the humidity goes up from its uh, current level, which I believe was 76%. Uh, I'll check that on the reading uh, because I scrolled through it quickly. So that's dropped by a couple of percent. The temperature's gone up by 1.3 degrees. And importantly, the dew point has reduced down by 3.1 degrees centigrade. So it would have to be a lot colder in here to actually start to form condensation, which at these temperatures would uh, be a frost. So that's a positive result in terms of combating humidity. But I'm in here now, chatting a puff in a way. So, uh, 
we'll see what the temperature rises to see what the humidity changes to and then will we be get any closer to forming condensation right i've been in here a good 30 minutes now it's been very pleasant the schooner's floating <laughs> So yeah, the temperature in, increased in here to, at this level, 9.2 degrees fairly quickly and, and stabilised. Got all the vents closed, it's not too windy a night, so kind of fairly stable in here. So the temperature went from, just to recap, originally empty temp to minus 0 0.3. With the candle alone, left for half an hour, not recommended plus one degree and then with me in here up to plus 9.2 so a rise of eight degrees centigrade and interestingly the uh, a dew point has gone up to plus 3.2 degrees but the humidity has dropped to uh, relative humidity has dropped to 68.5 percent so we've got a big difference a, a larger difference it was a difference of five degrees between the temperature and the dew point and now it's uh, over six degrees so we're less likely to get condensation because we've made that that gap bigger despite uh, I think the humidity has dropped in here as the temperatures increased but of course what will happen is with another person in here and uh, as I go to sleep and spend more time kind of breathing in here the candle goes out the temperature drops the humidity will rise and the temperature will drops and that and that's the, the condensation kind of like formula uh, isn't it so what I think would be a really good experiment would be to wake up in the morning see what the condensation is like I'm not really particularly anticipating any on the inside of this, this tent especially since I'll sleep with some element of ventilation It'd be interesting to see uh, what it would be like in the morning kind of condensation wise and humidity wise and then light the candle in the morning before you get out of bed and see if it all kind of like help to dry it out a little bit okay so uh, I'm gonna call it a night now I'm gonna go back in the in the house forecast snow tonight actually but my uh, wee lad and I are gonna slip in here tomorrow night so thanks for watching uh, that's been a worthwhile experiment and stay watching if you like for part 2b of part 2 of the uh, UCO candle test cheers thanks very much okay next part of the video part 2b and the temperature tonight is 6 degrees centigrade it's warming up there from my hand relative humidity outside is 72 percent and the dew point is 0 0.4 degrees centigrade so let's get this in the tent see what it's like in there right I've had the Kestrel 3000 in the tent there for half an hour now so I'm going for a little bit more realism tonight typical winter camping conditions with the vent open on each end like this and the mesh door partly open just there to, to try and get a little bit of a through draft so now in the tent in the evening the dew point is 0 0.3 The temperature is 6.3 so tonight the relative humidity the dew point and the temperature are very similar to inside to outside so let's get this lit and we'll leave it a good 20 minutes half an hour and see how that changes We've got a little bit of a tiny bit of a breeze tonight a little bit of a through draft so I know this is all a bit long-winded uh, but experiments are you know so bear with me 
I've got it all set up for my son and I to be in here tonight. Winter sleeping bag each. So Joel's got the Evolution OEX Evolution Fathom 400 and I've also given him a, a Dragon Mountain Equipment Dragon 300 down bag and the latest way that we're having our winter sleep system is that we're having one of these very thin very portable Highlander wee mats and just fastened to the mat underneath so it doesn't slide off uh, with a bit of elastic net and then a, uh, a firmer rest ridge rest underneath so mine's the same so that's my kind of like winter system at the moment I think what I'm going to try on my next winter uh, solo camp though is I'm going to try just the Highlander mat on top and underneath and that would be really really lightweight and portable and it might just be warm enough okay so let's leave this candle brewing for a bit okay brilliant Joel and I have just got in the, t in the tent say hi Joel and I'd left the candle burning in here uh, a good a good hour and the temperature with nobody in uh, on this evening was seven degrees it had risen up just a little bit and the relative humidity was uh, 79 so the humidity had gone up and uh, the dew point had also risen to 1.2 so I would say that it was maintaining the, the same kind of difference the temperature had risen but the dew point was just the same so we're going to get in bed now and we're going to uh, see what, with two of us in there, what the humidity goes up to and what the temperature goes up to. Fantastic. Hey, Munch Bunch, not all yours. Thank you. So we've been in here like 20 minutes now and the temperature stabilised at about 15 degrees centigrade. The dew point stabilised just around 10.2. So we're safe from condensation in here now and interestingly I said that the relative humidity was about the same when we'd not been in long but actually it was falling it had been 79 down to 77 and now it's at 67 and stabilized so it seems seems that you know initially when you get in the tent is the humidity this is what happened the other night as well the humidity gets driven down as the temperature rises but let's uh, we're going to blow the candle out now and we'll see what happens right we switched the candle off about half an hour ago and the temperatures noticeably dropped it's 12.2 now and the dew point has also reduced to 8 degrees and the relative humidity has risen to 73 so my conclusion is uh, just like the one man tent it was doing uh, a modest job of bringing the temperature up it was a big temperature boost with the person or tonight persons in there and uh, this is a little bit more conclusive of the humidity being kept down so our body heat drew the humidity uh, down and that must have been combined with the candle and now it started to rise back up to 75 now 76 yeah it's going up still that's gone up past 77 so it's up past where it was with the candle alone so we're going to say good night aren't we Joel so in the morning, we're going to, uh, when we wake up, I'm going to do a measurement and then I'm going to put the candle on. Night night. Say night night. Night night. Morning people. It's been an interesting night. Little Joel's just waking up. Morning Joel. <laughs> so, it's been quite a steamy night. There's uh, a lot of melting snow outside and the ground's super saturated anyway from days and days and rain, of rain we've had here in the northeast. 
So what I found this morning that there's definitely some condensation on the inside of the inner tent, condensation on the on the surfaces of the sleeping bag. Uh, wasn't particularly unpleasant, but definitely that surface condensation that you don't want to touch. And I found that 8 18 a.m. the temperature in here was 5.5 degrees. The relative humidity was 89.3 percent and the dew point was, was 3.2 so water vapor was condensing on the colder surfaces like the outside of the sleeping bag fabric and the tent fabric now I put the uh, candle on and after 20 minutes things had actually got worse in terms of relative humidity the temperature had gone up uh, up to 7.9 degrees centigrade but the dew point had risen as well to 7.4 and the humidity was at, at 99.8 and I think what a big influence it was is when I got up out of my sleeping bag and started to move around it released all that kind of like steamy moist air from inside and it, one thing I've learned from this experiment is is that it's the candle has a uh, something of an influence but the bigger thing is the human body that you've got inside <laughs> that steamy I feel like I'm carrying around a, a, a sauna with arms and legs rather than a, than a body but and I thought oh it's a hopeless situation we're at 100% the humidity here it's just not going to dry out but I left the candle on and what I found was after a, another uh, 30 minutes at 10 past 9 the humidity started to drop and I, and I felt that it started to dry here the temperature uh, remained or yeah went up a little bit more again so it was like it took a, a long time for the candle to start to get a, a grip of the humid air and it actually got worse for a while and then it started to reduce so now the humidity is continuing to fall it's 80.9% now and that's at 9.27 so that's an hour and 10 minutes so I would say that yes the so what can we take from all this will it be worth carrying or am I going to carry in future the UCO candle lantern on winter whale camps and the answer is yes uh, just a little disclaimer don't do what I did don't leave the candle unattended in the tent and be very careful around it the metal's hot on the surface don't light it near any flammable materials see the frost on the on the ground still there the air temperature's risen to five degrees outside this morning but uh, evidently the ground temperature is still very cold so the conclusions were that the UCO candle will have an influence on uh, an empty still tent it will raise the temperature by around one and a half to two degrees and that's at the level of the candle itself there's obviously going to be quite a lot of uh, escape out of, out of this middle section where the candle is so most of the heat will be uh, lost through the fabric materials of the tent. Excuse me, you're looking a bit steamy there, mate. Yeah, so the bigger influence is the people inside. And it seems that, that the candle will lower the relative humidity and make the dew point further away when you've got a, in my experience a, a level of humidity less than 80% but I found this morning when we woke up the humidity levels were already uh, very high and then when I got moving and more moisture was kind of like released then it went over to threshold 100% and the UCO candle didn't seem to be doing anything and then it slowly brought it down so I was kind of feeling a bit hopeless. I thought, well, it's going to have no influence in the morning other than a little bit of cheer. But it did start to bring it down and my sleeping bag was definitely less damp. Now, a little bit of a problem with all this is this is one set of experiments and one set of conditions, but I've tried to make it as controlled as possible. And of course, if you were properly scientific, you'd do this uh, over a number of, exp of, of times, wouldn't you? You'd do this kind of uh, 
at least three or four times replicating the same conditions to try and eliminate any errors I'm not gonna do that I'm sure you wouldn't watch it either okay so yeah start getting the stuff down uh, the other thing I've learned is no my son won't help with putting the stuff in other than carrying a little tiny bit and he won't help with taking the tent down generally uh, <laughs> but I don't mind because I just enjoy doing it and I'm sure if I put the arm on me he would actually do it now where do we go from here what do you do if you really want to hit a tent up this in a tent would I carry it no <laughs> but it gives up a lot of heat